What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you my six tips for Revit customization. So this is something that they find really important and that's to customize your, well, Revit in order to have the most efficient uh, workflow possible. So I'm just going to be sharing my tips with you. Uh, now before we start with that, make sure to subscribe to this channel for more useful Revit tutorials and then also make sure to hit that like button to make the alpaca happy. Okay, so with that out of the way, uh, let's get started. So let's go into Revit and then uh, let's start off with tip number one and that is to absolutely uh, make sure to sign up at BalkanArctic.com. The link is going to be the first link just below the video in the description and then also there in the cards. Uh, on my website, BalkanArctic.com, I have all of my Revit courses. So I have over 120 hours of content so far and I'm adding more each month. And there I take the extra time to go in depth step by step and show you all of the Revit's beginner, intermediate as well as advanced level topics. So so if you're interested, please check it out. Okay, now for the real first tip, I'm just going to be showing you how to customize your uh, templates and all of the links uh, from Revit. So what do I mean by that? Uh, now here I am in Revit, as you can see, and we have to go to uh, customizations or options and we can do that by going here to this little home button. You can use the shortcut control D and when you click that, it goes to the kind of Revit's interface. Now there you want to go to the file menu and then uh, here in the file menu we have options. So you click on options and that's going to open up Revit options and here you can customize everything that you need. Uh, now here if I go to file locations this is where you get all of the links to external locations for your Revit project. So you probably already know that here for example at the top you have all of the all of the templates for example, for my version of Revit, you can see that they have customized this. So here I have my custom Balkan Architect template first, then I have my architecture design template second. And if you want to check those out, they are available on my website, the balkanarctic.com. Uh, so that, as I said, it's going to be the first link just below the video and also in the cards. If you want to get templates as well, uh, make sure to check it out. Okay, moving forward, uh, here we can see the default path for user files. So if you're searching for any existing file, you can specify that path here. So if you already have a folder where you keep all of your Revit files, perhaps if you're working on a really large project, it makes sense to just use this one uh, or to set it up here if you're going to be using it over and over again, or if it's something where you often save your files to. Then you have uh, your default uh, path for uh, family files. So this is for all of your family files. And then also you have the system analysis workflow and so on. Uh, now something that's kind of important yet uh, stays hidden and that is this places button. Now it looks kind of odd places and doesn't really give you much more than that. It has kind of three dots to get you interested a little bit, but it's not going to say what it is. So once you open this up, you can see that here for places, you have your metric library and the metric detail library. So what this means is that when you want to uh, go and search for a family, you know, you will go to load family button in Revit, it opens up a certain file location. And that file location can be specified here. So if you want to use different uh, different libraries, you can just go here, click on this little button, and then you can specify that. So I really like the option that you can actually specify this, but I don't like the fact that it's hidden. So you have to go here to places and that's, that's where you can find it. So for example, in my case, it was always defaulting to the Imperial library, and then you had to change it and add the metric library here as well. But obviously you can add more. So you just click on this button and then you can say, I don't know, like Imperial imperial library okay there we go then we click here click on the little builder button and then we can go here to imperial library click open and then that's going to stay there so you're going to have that option as well and now in this case i don't really need it so i'm just going to get rid of that and let's just stick with these two okay let's click okay and then it's time to move to the second tip and that is customizing the colors in Revit. So customizing your colors that can be done here on the graphics uh, card. 
or a graphic tab uh, here as you can see you have your colors window uh, now this might seem something that you don't need uh, but I actually like to customize this as you can see you can customize your background I suggest going with white but you can change that if you want and then we have the selection and pre-selection now this pre-selection is when you just hover over an existing element in Revit and then it kind of highlights in blue and you can actually specify that here so you can change it to a different color also you have selection so when you select something well then it becomes blue in this case but obviously you can change that uh, now also you have this little option to switch this to semi-transparent uh, which means that while well, it's a little bit transparent when you select it I actually like that option because if I just want to kind of take a quick peek I can select an element and then it becomes transparent for a second and I, I can use that to look through that element I think it's uh, useful to have that also you have this alert which is set to orange I actually like to change that to red because red seems a little bit more alert than orange but you can feel free to change that if you want and then we also have these two options that are maybe interesting to you as well <laughs> okay so that's the, that's the second tip when it comes to uh, colors in Revit and customizing your colors next step and this is really important especially if you export your uh, line work model so your hidden line views so for that and that's this smooth lines with anti aliasing so what this means is you know when you create some lines perhaps some circles curved lines Revit tends to pixelate those lines and they look kind of odd and it's because well it's using pixels kind of rectang rectangles to create a curved line and that's kind of the obvious uh, mistake that can happen or an obvious kind of uh, byproduct of using pixels uh, now you can actually fix that by using this option smooth lines with anti-aliasing and now you have the option to allow it for each view so you have to open up your uh, your graphic display options and then you can uh, check that there so you can either use that or what they like to use is just go here to uh, use for all views so it's just set to automatic and always when you have your curved lines they're going to look a lot smoother with this option okay moving forward uh, the next one is the double click behavior so if I just go here to user interface uh, you can see that here we have our keyboard shortcuts of course but then we have the double click options so when you double click on certain elements in Revit they can have certain behaviors and you can actually customize that here so for example for a family if you click or, or double click on any family it will just go into edit mode for that family now some people don't like it so you can change this to edit type or you can go to do nothing personally I don't have a problem with that so I just leave it as is uh, the next one is sketched elements uh, so uh, like floors uh, roofs things like that if you double click it goes into sketch mode so you can edit that element of course you can go with edit type or do nothing uh, inside views schedules on sheets you can just activate that view so you have that option so when a sheet is uh, when you have a sheet and some views on that if you double click on a sheet or a schedule it kind of uh, freezes everything else and it allows you to play around with that view so it activates that view so you have that option as well uh, you can of course change that to do nothing if you want uh, you have assemblies groups and stairs so for all of these if you double click on that it goes into edit element mode and again you can change that to do nothing or edit type is it the same for everybody yes it is okay so let's okay out of that menu if you want to make some customizations there feel free to do so I think it's a good option that we have uh, to kind of customize that if we don't like the current setup okay moving forward uh, and that is the customization of notifications so when you're working in Revit uh, you will get notifications uh, to uh, save your project so Revit is telling you you know your computer might crash so you might want to save this project now in this case you can see that my save reminder here at notifications is set to 30 minutes uh, sometimes I even have it uh, at more the reason for that and the only reason is because I use Revit 
a lot for creating these tutorials, courses, and much more. So with the context of a tutorial, you don't want to get those interruptions and notifications. It's really annoying and it, then it messes up my tutorials. So I usually uh, turn these off, but if you're working on regular projects, I would have them at 15 minutes. I think that's important to, to have that. Uh, to have that reminder because if you don't save well then bad things might happen if your computer crashes you lose all of your work and you don't want that so that was the next tip and finally for the sixth tip and this isn't actually within that those options that's actually within Revit so let's quickly go here to the kind of main page go with the new project I'm just going to use my template that's okay and then here as soon as Revit opens up I want to show you one uh, one potential issue and how to uh, customize that so when you're working in Revit and if you just go here to the wall tool for example and then let's place a bunch of walls hit the escape key a couple of times and then let's turn on the shadows you can see the shadows appear even though we don't really have anything below there is no floor or ground below these floors the shadow will will still appear and that's because that's just set by default to to have those shadows appear on a level one now this is perfectly fine with walls but what happens when you create topography so if i go here to mask in sight uh, if i go to topography uh, oh, I actually have to go to the site plan. So let's open up the site plan and then let's place some points. So I'm just going to place, place some points, place four points like this, hit the escape key a couple of times, select those points, go to copy and then copy them up once. Let's set the elevation to, I don't know, like 2000 millimeters. Or no, let's go with 200. Okay, this is bad as well. Let's try two. Oh, yeah, I, I mean meters. I, I thought I was in millimeters. My mistake. Okay, then let's copy this again. And then here, let's have it at four meters. There we go. Works much better. Now, when I hit finish, this, in some cases, it's going to cast its own shadows. So if I go here to the properties and if I just turn off my view template from the site plan to none, apply, okay. And now if I turn on the shadows, as you can see, my site plan will be throwing a shadow as well. Now this is kind of odd. You usually don't have ground casting a shadow and I don't like the fact that Revit does this. So you can actually customize this. You can actually turn this off by simply going here to your uh, visual styles, graphic display options, or sorry, not graphic display options. You want to go to your sun settings. That's right. It's kind of odd. It's a graphic display setting or option but it's in the sun settings that's why I made that mistake here and that's why it might be a little bit confusing so again as I said you go here to your sun settings and then here you have ground plane at level and then it can be either level one or even level two which will be even odder because then it kind of casts shadows just here so the best option I find is just to go and uncheck that hit apply okay so the shadows will be cast if you have ground, but if you don't have ground, the shadows won't be cast. So if I go like that, as you can see, no shadows below this because, well, it's just in an infinite space. It's There is nothing below that. So that's just an additional thing that I like to customize so I don't have those weird shadows below my topography. So there you go. Those are all of the tips that they have for customization. Now, I would like to encourage you to tell me in the comment section below, just below the video, uh, tell me what are some of the customizations that you make? Uh, was this informative? Did you learn something new? Do you plan to use some of this in your own projects or if in your own workflow? And if you have some better ideas, please tell me. I'm always eager to learn. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content, uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos, and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.